Our guest today is the 11th Ward Alderman. The 11th Ward has been home to five Chicago mayors. History tells us there are few better beginnings. There was Ms. Mayor Richard J. Daly, Mayor Michael Belandic, and Mayor Richard M. Daly, to name a few. Even Mayor Martin J. Kennelly, Mayor Richard J. Daly's predecessor, originally came out of the 11th Ward. Our guest today has served his country well and bravely. He served as a member of the United States Marine Corps during the Vietnam War and was awarded the Bronze Star. He is a member of the American Legion, Veterans of Foreign Wars, Disabled American Veterans, and the three purple, and has three purple hearts. Am I saying that right, Jim? Has three purple hearts. So I just want to read to you something from the Secretary of the Navy, United States of America. Private First Class, James A. Balser, United States Marine Corps. For heroic achievement while serving as ammunition man, Headquarters and Service Company, 1st Battalion, 9th Marines, 3rd Marine Division in the Republic of Vietnam on 22 and 23 February 1969 during Operation Dewey Canyon. Private First Class Balser and two fellow Marines volunteered to bring Marines who had been wounded or killed in action during an engagement with enemy forces in the Ah Shao Valley back to the company's mountaintop position above the valley. With total disregard for his own safety, he and other Marines maneuvered down a, down a steep incline to the, to the position where the dead and wounded Marines lay. Although night had fallen and visibility was very limited to only a few yards, they carried two seriously wounded Marines back up the mountain while receiving and returning fire from probing enemy forces. To relative safety inside the company's defensive perimeter. After returning inside the company's perimeter and learning that more casualties were reported to be at the bottom of the mountain, uh, Private First Class James A. Balser and other Marines and another Marine maneuvered back down the mountain and carried another seriously wounded Marine to safety. By his courage, bold initiative, and selfless devotion to duty, Private First Class James A. Balser reflected the great credit upon himself and upheld the highest traditions of the Marine Corps and United States Naval Service. This Combat Distinguished Award, the, the Combat Distinguished Device is authorized by the Secretary of the Navy. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the City Club of Chicago, Alderman Jim Balser. Alderman. Thank you. Thank you. Please sit down. I, uh, I'm, I'm honored to be here with Jay, and I want to thank Jay and uh, Dr. Green and everyone for inviting me. Uh, when Jay read my citation, I, there was people in the city council that, that were there. My old commanding officer from Vietnam uh, pinned uh, the medal on me, and what he told me was, he goes, Jim, he goes, you were a terrible Marine in the, in the rear, he said, but when the chips were down, you were there. And that night um, was probably one of my worst nights in my life, but yet it uh, was one of my best nights in my life uh, to save, to work, to work with other Marines, to save other Marines. And, what we always looked upon Marines as, we were all, we would say at that time, you were Marine Green. And the last Marine we carried up that was most seriously wounded is a Marine from Chicago. Uh, I went to talk to him and uh, it was an interesting conversation as we remembered that night. And before I start speaking, I have to say something. Uh, number one, I want to thank Mayor Daly uh, for allowing me to receive my medal in the city council and allowing Fritz Warner to speak up at the podium. And I believe there's only two or three other people that the mayor allowed to speak up there. And Mayor Emanuel, what's interesting how I knew him is uh, when he was congressman, he helped my friend just get his medal. It took 
31 years for me, it took 40 some for him. So I was, I'm always indebted to uh, both men uh, for ensuring that we were acknowledged. <laughs> With a great honor uh, to speak here before the City Club. It was all admitted to the 11th Ward home of the Chicago White Sox and last team to win the World Series by defeating the Houston Astros in 2005. I am also a Marine and Vietnam veteran and was Director of Veterans for the City of Chicago for seven years. For those who don't know my history, um, I'm proud to say my uh, dear mother served in the Army during World War II. My grandfather served in the Navy in World War I and World War II and re-enlisted at 48 to serve in World War II. Uh, two twin brothers, John and Joe, that served in the Army uh, during Vietnam, and uh, as they told me, uh, they went to join the Marines, but the, they claimed the Marine Corps recruiter was out to lunch, so we always joke about that. <laughs> Forty-three years ago, when I was uh, an 18-year-old Marine PFC in Vietnam, if someone had told me I would become Alderman of the 11th Ward, I would not have believed it possible. But with dedication, determination, desire, and di discipline, one can achieve anything in our great nation. The subject I will speak to you today is on uh, things that are near and dear to my heart, the American flag, patriotism, and the city council. I'd like to take you on a tour of the, uh, the veterans memorials, which I have done many times, uh, military sacrifices to our country. Uh, there are many memorials in our city, some you may know and others you may not. Chicago's O'Hare Airport, named after Lieutenant Commander Butch O'Hare, uh, who received the Medal of Honor on February 20th, 1942, during the Battle of the Coral Sea. He shot down five Japanese bombers. What is not known about him, he was later killed off Tarawa, earning the Navy Cross. Midway Airport, named after the Battle of Midway Island during World War II. It is also home of a plaque remembering the Marines and Navy corpsmen killed in Beirut. Soldier Field, the three survivors of Iwo Jima the Iwo Jima flag raising, Hayes, Gagnon, and Bradley did a, the seventh war bond drive through there. For those who don't know, Soldier Field got its name from the Gold Star Mothers of World War I, who wanted the stadium at that time named after their stuns, the sons. We brought the, uh, a statue. How many people know what a doughboy is? Pete? You guys all? People know what a doughboy. We, there, there was a statue, uh, a fellow by the name of Fred Randazzo told me about a statue that was uh, a World War I statue, and it was in a park, and it had, it had been in another park, and it was badly damaged. I went to Mayor Daly, I said, when we redo the park, when we do uh, Soldier Field, let's put this Doughboy statue in there. We did, when you go into the south end of the stadium, you will see the statue. And there's a bar relief that honors those who are still serving. There's also the plaques uh, on the north end of the stadium honoring all those who served. At Navy Pier, there are plaques for the merchant marines and the armed guard that served in the Navy during World War II. Olive Park, named after Milton Olive III, Medal of Honor recipient, who threw himself on a grenade to save others. The General John Logan statue at 11th and Michigan. For those who don't know, General Logan is the founding father of Memorial Day. The Eternal Flame in Daly Plaza. The new, the new Vietnam v Veterans Memorial at State and Wacker. Uh, again, I'd like to thank Mayor Daley for his work and seeing that this was done along with Senator Durbin. Rainbow Beach. Does anybody know who Rainbow Beach is named after? Rainbow Division, Rainbow Division of World War I. Oakwood Cemetery, home of the largest mass burial of Confederate soldiers outside of the South. There are over 5,000 buried there. One of my favorites is the Doughboy statue of, at 35th and King Drive that honors African Americans who fought in World War I. The old 8th Regiment Armory, now a military high school in Bronzeville. Our Lady of Guadalupe Church, 91st and Brandon. 13 parishioners from that church were killed during Vietnam. One of the 13, Edward Cervantes, was a bad boy for the Chicago White Sox in 1962. He was killed in Vietnam. Chicago is home to the largest ROTC contingent in the nation. There are over 40, 43 or how many? 43. 43, I was right. Thank you, Lieutenant. Uh, public schools have ROTCs, and I think they're a great thing with the city of Chicago. They have, one of, they have the highest graduation rate. They are integrated. Uh, they are very good for our schools. Olive Harvey College, named after Milton Olive III, Medal of Honor recipient, Vietnam, and Carmel Harvey, Medal of Honor recipient, Vietnam, who was killed. 
Manuel Perez Junior School, Medal of Honor recipient, World War II. On, 2 13, on the 2nd of February, 1940, I'm sorry, on February 13th, 1945 in the Philippines, he single-handedly killed 18 Japanese soldiers, knocked out two pillboxes with grenades, and knocked out two more positions with two twin 50 caliber machine guns. He was subsequently killed. 53 parks in the city have reference to memorials. Kennedy Park at 114th and Western is home to the Korean War Memorial. Normandy Park on 660 West 52nd Street is named after D-Day. Veterans Memorial Park at 2820 East 98th Street. Ridge Park at 96th and Ridgeland has memorials to the Gulf War, the Revolutionary War, the Spanish-American War, the Philippine Insurrection, and the China Relief. As a lifelong resident of Bridgeport in the 11th Ward, I am very proud of the memorials in my ward. The 11th Ward, as it's been said numerous times, is known for politics, mayors, Chicago White Sox, and the stockyards, and shellers. However, what is not very well known are those who have, who have served and came from the 11th Ward. Syntac Playlot at, Play at 28th and Wallace, named after Gregory Syntac, was killed in action in Vietnam. McEwen Playlot on 36th and Wallace, named after Lieutenant Joseph McEwen, U.S. Marine Corps, killed in action in Vietnam. James Humbert Playlot, 31st and Lowe, named after James Humbert, United States Navy, killed in action during World War II. Florian Jaslik Playlot at Short and Eleanor, named after Florian Jaslik, Jaslik, United States Army, killed in action in World War II. In Canaryville, there are memorials there honoring those who died. There's a Veterans Memorial at Archer and Levitt. There's a Veterans Memorial at 34th and May. There's a Veterans Memorial at 35th and Western. World War II, World War II Victory Gardens we have in the 11th Ward. We have one at 44th and Wallace with the Canaryville Veterans. 30th and Wallace, 30th and Canal. The names on the memorial from World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. There's another one on 29th and Parnell. Famous veterans from the 11th Ward. Some you may know, some you may not. Lieutenant Colonel Joseph McCarthy, Medal of Honor recipient, World War II, the Battle of Iwo Jima. And Jack, correct me if I'm wrong, he was the first head of the ambulance service here in Chicago with the fire department. James Michaels, United States Marine Corps. Now, folks may not know this, but there were two flag raisings on Iwo Jima. There was a second one, the famous picture, but there was the first one. Little known about that flag raising. James Michaels, United States Marine Corps, was one of those who helped raise the flag on Iwo Jima. He was from the 11th Ward. There were three brothers killed during World War II, the Kessner brothers. Mayor Belandic served in the Marines and fought on Iwo Jima. Famous Chicagoans that served in the military, and there are many, but I will name a few. Some I knew, proud to say, such as Judge Maravitz, uh, always a hero to me. I always admired the judge. He enlisted in the Marine Corps at 38 and served in World War II. Senator Paul Douglas, who was an alderman and enlisted in the Marines at 50 years old. He's the oldest person to go through boot camp and he served in World War II and I think he subsequently came out a major and was uh, seriously wounded. George Hallis, owner of the Chicago Bears and founder of the NFL, served in World War I and re-enlisted in the Navy in World War II at 47 or 48. In fact, I, I honored, or, I argued with the, with the NFL when they took one of George Hallis's win away from him. I called him, why? Well, he wasn't there. I said, wait a minute. I said, he went to join the Navy and you're taking away his win? I couldn't get the win back, but they knew that there were people that were mad. Bill Veck from the Chicago White Sox served in the Marine Corps. Major Patrick Donovan, uh, United States Marine Corps, recipient of two Navy crosses, Silver Star, two Distinguished Flying Crosses, served in Vietnam, also received a Purple Heart and a Bronze Star. For those who don't know, the Navy Cross is the second highest award you can receive next to the Medal of Honor. It is one step below, you're, you're inches away from the Medal of Honor. Mayor Harold Washington served in the Army during World War II. Parades, uh, Memorial Day, also called Decoration Day, is a, patri a patriotic holiday that we honor those who fought and died for our country. Now, a person that I'm going to mention here uh, that meant a lot to me and tutored me in politics is my mother-in-law, Teresa Patron, and I know there's folks out here that knew Teresa. 
when I first met Teresa, I was a 29-year-old um, disgruntled, pissed off guy. And uh, I went to her house, I was a typical Bridgeport guy, I had on my cutoff t-shirt, my sweatband and my sort of long hair. And <laughs> I started arguing with her about politics. I was going out with her daughter, Elena. And Elena's standing behind her going like this, no, no, no. I backed off and I found out later, she says, what kind of a guy comes to my house with sunglasses on when it's raining? She's, and uh, Elena said, well, he's from Bridgeport. She, don't care. she says, I don't care where he's from. He don't wear sunglasses when it, when it rains. <laughs> the first lesson I learned from Teresa, I had to give a speech about Vietnam, and I'll never forget this. I wasn't involved in politics. I was a, an activist in the veterans community. And I go over her house, and I thought, well, I, you know, she can tell me a few things. She had a map out. She's pointing. And I would say this, that. She goes, you can't talk like that. You have to say this, that, them, those. She goes, you have to pronunciate everything. I'm like, holy God, what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> but what I found out about Teresa was her love of country, was her love of the military, her family. Her husband, Frank, served in uh, the Army in the 10th Mountain Division in uh, World War II, and her organizational skills. Now, anybody that knew Teresa knew she could get the job done. And she left the Columbus Day Parade, and I said, I said, why don't you come and work, work with me on the Memorial Day Parade? Okay, the next thing I knew, she took it over. <laughs> she ran the parade at, when we brought it back to Chicago, uh, to downtown Chicago in 1998, we had 5,000 people. Before she left, we had like, it was the biggest parade in the country. And I've got to tell you a story to show you how she viewed things. A friend of mine, looked like a football player. He's a, uh, an army lieutenant colonel and uh, also a policeman. He served in Iraq and Afghanistan. I said, my, I said, why don't we put him on the parade, put him on the parade committee, he could help. So he writes a letter, Alderman Baltzer this, Alderman Baltzer that, right, he's going on and on. She gets this letter, she calls him up, sits him down. She goes, I'm in charge of this parade, not the alderman. And she goes, you better write it the way I, I want you to. So he calls me up, he goes, God, what am I gonna do, Jim? I said, you better listen to her. I said, you better do exactly as she tells you. But she brought back the Memorial Day parade, along with Mayor Daley, brought it back, largest in the country, and the mayor would honor all those who died from the state. He would have a private luncheon with them. We would have a, we have a wreath-laying ceremony where we give them roses and flags and we, we honor the parents. And I tell you, you know, in my, all my time, uh, in politics and, and, and doing veteran stuff for 43 years, it's still hard for me to be there with these people, to see when someone loses a son, a wife, a husband, a daughter, I can go on and on. It, it is, and what they go through, and what the help that they need, and, and Memorial Day, our most sacred holiday. To me, everybody has their own opinions. To me, I, I, whatever your opinion is, to me, Memorial Day is our nation's most sacred holiday that we must, as Americans, remember. And as I said, I, I couldn't pass up Memorial Day without mentioning Teresa. In 1986, we had the Vietnam Veterans Welcome Home Parade, the nation's, the nation's largest welcome home parade, over 250,000 marches. Now, as a Vietnam veteran, I was disgruntled when I came back. I was mad. Uh, I would tell you I didn't do drugs, I didn't drink, but I was mad. And I, I viewed the world differently as I do now. I, I viewed it quite differently. I was mad at everything. Why can't I get a job? Why can't I get this? Well, I learned something from Teresa. Nobody's going to give you anything unless you help yourself, unless you get involved. And from that I learned the, the necessity of being involved in politics, the necessity of doing what's necessary within the system. The Desert Shield Desert Storm Parade in 1991. Ceremonies uh, that, that we hold here. Uh, December 7th, of course, Pearl Harbor Day, we will be at Navy Pier. And for those who don't know, uh, and I'm extending an invitation here to everyone, on Veterans Day at 11 a.m. Uh, at Soldier Field, we're having our uh, Veterans Day ceremony. Uh, please come down and uh, join us as we um, remember uh, Veterans Day, which was, as anybody, Paul, what was Veterans Day before it was Veterans Day? Armistice. Armistice Day. And what did we do? On the 11th, at 11 a.m., we would put our hand on our heart and face east. And that's something that I think we should get back to. June 6th, we had, the, we had a great 
1994, we had a reenactment of D-Day. There are a lot of things that we've done here in the city of Chicago that I'm very proud of uh, to work with the mayor and to be the uh, leader in the city council on veterans and a military issue and uh, uh, to work with Joe and Tim and Tom uh, there. Uh, it's really an honor because we don't, uh, contrary to what people think, we're not constantly fighting there. I'd like to talk about um, things here in the, uh, that I've done, that we've done now, more up-to-date stuff, and I'll get into politics in a minute. We had what was called the Valor Games uh, in the 11th Ward at Cellular Field. Veterans who were wounded in Iraq and Afghanistan and other wars, testing their physical abilities in cycling, weightlifting, and rowing. Uh, many were double amputees, losing arms, legs, severely burned, others with traumatic brain trauma. Not one complained to me. Not one sought pity. I looked, I had a young man come up to me, and he was trying to talk to me, and I get a little bit uh, upset with him. He was trying to talk to me, and I was leaning over trying to listen to him, and, and he was telling me he was a Marine. He could barely get the words out. But he was involved in an, in an explosion. He could barely get the words out, but not one of them complained. I put on the television that night, and what do I see on television? People complaining about standing at the airport, having to be screened, having to stand in line an extra 10, 15 minutes. I thought to myself, what in the hell is wrong with you? We're trying to protect you here. And you see these men and women who've given so much, and not one complained. Another family that I've just dealt with, Lance Corporal Joseph Joshua Mizowitz, lost both of his legs in an explosion in Afghanistan just this July. Hearing in one ear, burned hip, leg, and both of his legs were gone. I talked to his father. His father told me, he goes, Jim, he goes, he was upbeat. I'm like, holy shit, how can you be upbeat? I'm thinking in the back of my head. The guy goes, Jim, he goes, we can't feel sorry. He goes, we have to move on. We held a fun, or a group that held a fundraiser in our, our ward. His two uncles are firemen. And what I seen, uh, th this courage is truly remarkable. Truly remarkable. I thought I had seen it all in, in the veterans community. I've been going to the VA hospitals for a gazillion years, and I, I thought I'd seen it all, but what I've seen here now with these young men and women uh, that are serving our country, it's beyond belief. It's just they go back, they go back again, they go back again, and it's just a tribute to these men and women that are serving now and have served. Now, on a lighter moment as we drift into the city council, <laughs> Joe, I talked to you first. I always said my, 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 my two votes in the city council, my worst vote and my best vote, and they both have to do with my colleague, Joe. Uh, one was foie gras. Now, I'm, I'm an animal lover, and Joe came to me, he goes, Jimmy goes, will you support me on this? I said, Ab absolutely, and then when everything un unraveled, there we were. My proudest vote was, there, there was a resolution, I think that, did you sponsor that one, Joe? That, that Joe sponsored, opposing the war in Iraq. Uh, I was the only one that voted no not to oppose it. Now, people ask me why. I told Joe and I told others, I had served in Vietnam and it seemed like nobody supported us. I could not in good conscience sign on to it. I could not do it. And I never, I shook Joe's hand when it was over. I never said they were wrong, I was right, blah, blah, blah. It was my own personal belief that the men and women going into combat need that support. And it was a non-binding resolution. That, that, that was, uh, as a Marine and a veteran of Vietnam, that was my proudest moment in the city council. Things that I've, I've done in the city council, um, for the first, we, we've, and this is all of us, all my colleagues that were here, for first responders, police, fire, and paramedics serving in the National Guard and Reserve that have been called to active duty. We work with them to make sure that they get, that they get paid. When you're away and your wife or your husband is expecting that check from the city and there's policemen, firemen, and paramedics or other city employees, to make sure that they get that check to make sure that their um, retirement is, is deducted so when they come back, they didn't have $10,000 worth of debt. Many of our troops have um, multiple service uh, in, in, Afghan, in Afghanistan and, and Iraq. Uh, one policeman 
that I know, and I can't, his name is slipping me right now, he was in Afghanistan, and he went into a, um, a building or a shack, whatever, and he goes, Jim, he goes, I knew it was unsafe. As Soon as the helicopter took off, it blew it down on him. And he, multiple broken bones, thought he would never walk again, he's back on the job. That's part of service, a double service to the country. We, we are going on this, on this Veterans Day, I'm hoping to honor in the city council, police and firemen that were killed in World War II. We've been able to identify six policemen, and there are firemen, that were called to active duty or enlisted. They subsequently went uh, into the military and they were killed in World War II. And I hope, I, I talked uh, to some people about making sure that their names get on the, um, on the uh, police memorial and we'll honor them in the city council. Uh, I, I, I've introduced over 143 ordinances and resolutions. 83 passed or adopted. <laughs> John, here we go. Or no, this is a different one from John. Uh, one I sponsored was the uh, child passenger safety seat uh, regarding the, yeah, that was with the, with the sales, uh, making sure that people knew how to put in the, uh, the safety seats. Um, sponsored a ban, <laughs> back to you, John, sponsored a ban on the sale of crib bumpers and pads in the uh, city of Chicago. I believe that we had uh, Sid's death. Uh, Co-sponsored curfew hours for minors. Employee uh, compensation plan, inserting new section for city employees who are members of the reserve force or active duty eligible for additional pay leave, extended the hours of security cameras, prohibiting the sale, the sale of sparklers. Now, I will tell you with sparklers, uh, people asked why. They're, 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 not that, they're, they're not that bad. I had a brother that was burned up, arm burned up pretty seriously. And when I seen these people that came in and testified at the city council, I said, well, we, gotta, we have to do something here. They, are very, they were dangerous. Fire hydrants. Uh, fire hydrants are, are open during the summertime. We've increased the fines. Municipal flag, displaying the uh, American flag, honoring those who lost their Illinoisans, who lost their lives in the armed service at half staff. Pension contributions, calling for the clarification of pension contributions for city employees who are on active duty uh, to military service in Afghanistan or Iraq. Police impersonation. Uh, I amended the law by inserting new language for an unlawful representation of a police officer. Now, from what I understand, when I looked at the code, that it hadn't changed since 1936, and we have people that are walking around impersonating police officers and firemen. Police stations and fire stations and libraries have disposable boxes for tattered or discarded American flags so they can be properly retired on Flag Day. Now, one thing I always, I never, I, it troubles me deeply when I see a tattered American flag. I'd rather see no flag than a tattered American flag. School safety zones, setting restrictions for, uh, for battery, char for ba to charge for battery if there's fights outside of school. Bunker gear for the fire department. I had a fireman from my ward who uh, came in and told me, Jimmy goes, I was burned. I said, where were you burned? And I guess there's this bunker gear that the fire department didn't have, and it's these overalls that they have to put on. They were wearing the coats and it didn't protect their inner thighs and they were getting burned, so we, uh, we got them bunker gears. Committee hearings, uh, committee hearings regarding the psychological testing of veterans who were found unqualified to be, to be police officers, and it troubled me deeply. We had one individual who guarded the president for four years. The company found him orally unqualified to be a police officer. We hauled him, we, we, we had the company before the um, that did the psychological testing. We had him before the uh, police and fire committee before I was chairman. I said, what, what questions do you ask? I asked him how many people they, they killed. So I paused and I'm waiting. I hear nothing. I said, did you ask him any good questions? Did you save lives? Did you drive a truck? Were you in the MPs? Did you do anything good? He goes, no. I said, well, what, what, how are you testing these people? That was wrong and I still stand by it today. Guys, I'll tell you what, that's it for me. <laughs> that's it. That's it. I, I go out on that, on, that, on that note, and I've enjoyed speaking. I'll, I'll answer questions, I guess. Um, we got a couple of doozies for you. Fire away. <laughs> Bad phrase. Uh, uh, here we go from, uh, ready for this one? Yeah. Take a breath. Here we go. Mara Georges, you know who she is? Never met her. I don't think. <laughs> excellent printing. Excellent printing, by the way. Uh, top printing. We know that the city has a veteran's preference for hiring at CPD and CFD. 
Are there moves to in enact veterans' preferences in other departments? Maybe you should ask her. Yeah, that, that's, something, that, that's something that I've always agreed with. You know how I feel about that, Meryl? I, I think there should be veterans' preference in, in hiring. As a matter of fact, I, I want to work with Alderman Burke for these people. And I'll tell you another interesting I issue about this. Um, I don't know if you remember this, Mayor. There were, uh, if you're in the military and you take the police test, you're still in the military. You're not discharged. You are not discharged. So that means you don't have discharge papers. So when they passed the test, they sent a letter saying to them, well, we need proof that you're in the military. Send us, the city, send us a letter back saying that uh, from your commanding officer. Well, evidently, there's been people that their letters did not reach human resources. I found that quite disturbing. Is it one? Is it two? Is it three? Is it four? Is it five? Is it six? Whatever. So we are looking in, into that. And yes, there should be veterans' preference in hiring uh, for all city departments. I, I agree with that. And I'll work on it. Uh, this is from Perry Buckley. Perry, where are you? Also excellent printing. Look at that. With federal dollars for returning veterans drying up, can the city council provide free tuition at the city colleges of Chicago for vets? I'll take, I'll take that one, sure. I'll be honest. Well, first, I dealt with the city colleges. Um, what was interesting, what I found out with when I was, uh, I, the city colleges working with them about those tests that they give or uh, uh, to apply uh, to take your courses, correspondence course, that the city colleges of Chicago at one time were the largest. I would know it's something that they would have to look into, and I'm sure my colleagues would tell you that the budget is strangling us right now. Uh, where to find money, I don't know, but if there was money out there, I would be glad to get my hands on it. Okay. Two more questions. Uh, anonymous, but uh, and not even on an official card. Uh, no, asperg no aspersions as to which ward this came from. Uh, what do you think of Cardinal George, oh God, the Cardinal's comments about uh, Governor Quinn today, which kind of made the front page of the Sun-Times? You know about that? To be honest, I didn't read the Sun Times today. I, I don't. Good know. answer. Now you know why he gets keeps getting reelected, right? I don't know. I, well, let me answer this simply. I mean, that's the gov or that's the cardinal's right to say what he said. It's as simple as that. And it's the group who's ever you know, issue with pro-choice. That's their right to speak up. I tell everybody: if you have a complaint, speak up. Let people hear what your complaint is. Don't sit there with, with your holding your hands. Oh, I don't know what to do. If you're pro-life, fine. If you're pro-choice, fine. Whatever. Speak up and let everybody know. I commend the man for saying what he has to say. Simple as that. Not, not a bad answer. All right, now comes the toughest question of all. This is a toughie. I'm, I, I'm giving you a fair, uh, fair warning because it also involves me. <laughs> Many decades ago when I was at the Chicago Police Academy, some of the gentlemen and I would used to go after a hard day's work to a local establishment in the 11th Ward. The only bar I've ever been in in my life that had no signs. So here comes the big question. Are we ready? Shinnicks or Shallers? Oh. <laughs> now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Given my knowledge of the 11th Ward and given my knowledge of those, both those places, you are allowed to pass on this one. Because it could mean real trouble coming in 2015. Can I? Can never I, dodge a tough question. I never. I, won't, I, I go to both of them. How does that sound? <laughs> I go to both of them. I, uh, I can relate stories. Now I want, want to relate a story about the military again. Because every time you give me a question, it makes me think about other things. Uh, when I was serving in Vietnam, I thought it was one of the worst periods in our time in our country when we would go, we would go to get off the base, people would yell things at you, people would say things to you, and we were told, don't wear your uniform. Don't, you can throw, people would yell at you. I'm like, holy God, what, I, what did I do? I didn't do anything to anybody. All I did was serve the country. I thought that was bad, and I thought that had all ended. 1991 or 1992, I get a call from the mayor's office. They go, he's pissed off. I go, what about? I guess a Navy ship, they used to have Navy frigates that would come down to Navy Pier. And the captain of the ship, uh, the captain of the ship who was about 40 something at that time, his men, women that were all of age, tried to get into a bar. I couldn't believe what I heard next. We don't allow people in uniform. Like what the hell is going on here? I knew the system at that time and I knew where the jugular was. 
we hauled them before the Liquor Commission. I thought, big guy, you're not gonna play games here. We get them in front of the, we get them in front of the Liquor Commission, and the owner was apologetic. There was a policewoman whose husband had served in Vietnam who started this whole thing rolling. And I'm sitting there, and the guy who owns a bar gives me his written statement, he apologized, he couldn't be more apologetic. She reads it, <laughs> to this day I, I laugh somewhat, she looks at it and she throws it back at him, she goes, this is effing bullshit. She goes, you can't do this stuff in the city. I'm like, whoa. I found that to be tragic. Three years later, I'm in a barber shop getting a haircut. I was 43 or 44 at that time, I can't remember what I was. Mr. Balzer, we need help. I said, who is this? He goes, this is Sergeant so-and-so from the Marines. He goes, we tried to get into a bar, they wouldn't let us in. I said, why? He goes, they said they didn't, they didn't serve people in uniform. I told the barber, I said, cut all my hair off. I went, I had, I had the Marines get me a uniform. I thought, I want to play games, this is what we're going to do. I went out with the Marines, I put on the old uniform, it felt good to be in a uniform again, even though I was 40-something, it felt great to have that uniform on. Uh, 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 easy now, easy. We started walking and we had to walk, I had on these core frame shoes and they were tight, I had them, had them, I hadn't had them on in years. I said, how far do we gotta go? He goes, you see that light? I go, what light? He goes, it's down there. So we're walking on Chicago Avenue, we get to a bar called Kabooms. We get to go, we're standing out there. Dorman goes, we don't allow people in uniform. Again, my jaw drops. The young Marines are in front of me. I stepped in front of them. I said, can you repeat that, sir? I said, so I understand this. As soon as he heard my voice, he knew I had to be somebody. He calls the owner of the bar up, or the, the manager. He comes up, he goes, what's the problem? I said, well, number one, I said, you can't discriminate against people based on the uniform. We got on the uniform. He says, I'll cut anybody. I said, I work for the city. I don't care who you work for. I said, okay, big guy, remember my face. I said, I want you to remember me. I want you to remember who I am. Yeah, 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 go. We go out, there was a couple of other bars, and keep in mind it's like 15, 18 years ago, whatever it was, there was a couple other bars, and basically the same thing happens. Now at the end of the night, I thought, okay, we'll go to Hooters, we'll have a drink. I go to Hooters, I go to go to the washroom, I come back, Mr. Balzer, we got a problem. I'm like, God, what is the problem now? They won't serve us. The waitress comes back, I said, well, well what's going on here? She goes, well, she goes, we don't like people in uniform, but we'll serve you anyway. I said, okay, got the drinks. Had them call once, I had these, I had their names, hauled them in front of the Liquor Commission. Hauled them in front of the Liquor Commission. Told the guy, I said, remember me, big guy? Why don't you remember my face? They had a lawyer, and the lawyer was an expensive one. And he goes, how do we know we don't, that they don't, all, that they, they don't, uh, what's the word, uh, alter their identification cards and this, this, and that. I had this Navy chief sitting with me. <laughs> to this day, he pulls out the ID card. He goes, sir, do you see this ID? Guy goes, yeah, he goes, when we step off the ship, he goes, this ID is checked. He goes, if it's tampered with, he goes, that's a federal crime. He goes, you see this mustache? If it's shaved, we have to change it on the ID. So he's going on and on. Finally, they gave in and they apologized. And I told them, I said, man, I said, you can't discriminate against people because of a, a uniform. I had one of the laws changed in Springfield for accommodation. I always said there was discrimination against the military. And people would, they didn't believe me until I laid out a whole litany of things that had been done. There's a great book, I think it's called Coming Home. Oh boy, I can't remember who wrote it. Um, the guy, Bob, is it Bob? Is, I'm looking to you, I'm looking to you because you're the Oracle of Delphi. I think it was Bob Green, he wrote a book called, called Coming Home about veterans that were discriminated against and he, he lays out everything. So yeah, there, there is that, that type of discrimination. You want to ask me another question? No. I <laughs> Okay. We got, we got, we got gifts for you. We got oh. gifts for you.